So this video is a second way of explaining component form, kind of reiterating a lot of the concepts of component form, and then showing you an, another way to think about this and to actually express a vector into component form. So just to remind you, component form, when I say that phrase component form, it means to write the vector as a sum of its vector components along the unit vectors in our coordinate system. We're always going to be using a Cartesian coordinate system, so these unit vectors are called x hat, y hat, and z hat. Those are the unit vectors. And so any vector can be written as the sum of its vector components. This is a contrast to graphical form. So graphical form, you write it as an arrow, you have to tell me the magnitude or the length of that arrow, and you have to give me some kind of indication about the direction of that arrow. That would describe the vector in graphical form. Component form, though, is expressing the vector in, in a more mathematical way. It's showing um, the scalar component multiplied by a unit vector. So that's telling you about the vector component in the x direction and the vector component in the y direction. And so that's how you can get um, the vector in the component form is by writing it as the sum of its vector components. So that pink, pink uh, circle represents the x vector component or the vector component in the x direction and that one is the vector component in the y direction. So that's the sum of its vector components. That is vector A. It's the sum of its components. Now to show another way of writing this, um, if you remember the generic form of, an, of a vector in component form can be written as, like I said, a scalar component times a unit vector, so that makes it a vector component. And then um, the then you sum it with the other vector components. So this was like the x x direction vector component plus the y direction, the y vector component, and then the z direction vector component. And you can see that vector a is the sum of these components. So I have vector a here. It's written in graphical form, and I've also chosen a coordinate system to use to describe a. So a exists regardless of my choice of coordinate system. My choice of coordinate system just dictates how I will describe A, but A exists regardless of that coordinate system. And I've chosen A, this is a three-dimensional vector, it's kind of hard to draw that, but I'm going to tell you that A is pointing out of the board, to the left, and up. So now I'm going to draw this coordinate system. I'm drawing the unit vectors tail to tail with this vector A. So you can kind of see um, how A is relative to these directions. So in this coordinate system, X hat is coming out of the board, Y hat is pointing to the right, and Z hat is pointing up. Now this new purple arrow, that represents the vector component of A along the X direction. That's the vector component there. It points along the X direction, and it is showing you the projection of vector A along this dimension. So it's kind of like the shadow, like if you shined a light on vector A, you would get this shadow that emerges along this x direction. This new, this uh, slightly different purple arrow, that is the y vector component of vector A. So this is the projection of vector A along the y direction. Remember the y direction, according to our coordinate system, is horizontal. Y hat points to the right, so it's defining the horizontal dimension. And now this uh, kind of reddish pinkish arrow, this is the Z component of vector A, the vector component of vector A. And so this one is pointing up. And so when you put these three components together, when you place them tip to tail, you're showing that you're adding these three vector components together. And vector A is the resultant of these vector components. So that's why you'll notice vector A is tail to tail with the first vector in the sum and tip to tip with the last vector in the sum. That's what I mean when I say that vector A is the sum of its components. So in the previous video, when you were um, putting a vector into component form, you used that first generic expression of a vector in component form that showed the dot products um, of the scalar components, like the, the scalar component times a unit vector plus a scalar component times a unit vector. And those scalar components were formed by doing dot products. And you know that when you do a dot product, you need the norm of each vector in the dot product, and you need to know the angle between those two vectors in the dot product. So in the previous video, you needed the norms of the vector and you needed the angle between that vector and each of the uh, Cartesian coordinate system's unit vectors.
My question to you, though, is what if you don't know the norm and you don't know the angles that this vector is making with the unit vectors in the system? Could you potentially, could you put this into component form without that information? Well, the answer is yes. You don't necessarily need that specific information. You can if you have other information about the vector. You need some kind of information about the vector. But it doesn't necessarily have to be the norm and the, and the angle between the unit vectors. So I'm going to give you some examples to show you alternative ways, ways of putting a vector into component form when you don't know the angle that the vector is making with each of the unit vectors, or maybe you don't know the norm of the vector. So I'm going to explain this in the context of an example. So in my example here, I have a butterfly, and I'm going to describe the motion of this butterfly. The butterfly flies 10 miles west, then the butterfly flies 3 miles south, and then it flies 0.25 miles above the plane of the ground, like it's going up higher above the plane of the ground is what I mean by that. So a vector to describe the flight path of this butterfly is called vector f. And our goal is to express f in component form using the Cartesian coordinate system that I've chosen for you below here. So in this particular Cartesian coordinate system, x hat is pointing to the right, y hat is pointing up. And those two unit vectors describe the plane of the ground. So imagine you're kind of looking down like on a map almost, like you're looking down on the, on the plane of the ground. So east and west describes the horizontal direction in the plane of the ground, and north and south describes the, the vertical direction in the plane of the ground. And z hat is coming up out of the ground. So that's like describing the altitude above the ground. That's the z direction there. Um, and we want to try to express this vector f in component form. So what we need to do is we need to use this information to, to piece together the vector components of the path of this butterfly. By saying that it flies 10 miles west, that's telling us the length of that vector component, and it's telling us the direction of that vector component. So looking at our coordinate system, um, x hat defines this east-west east direction. Notice that x hat is pointing to the right, so that, po that points east west and east, like east is to the right, west is to the, to the left, north is up, south is down. So when I say 10 miles to the west, I'm telling you the vector component in the x direction. So the vector component of f in the x direction is given to you by words. It's saying 10 miles west west points in the opposite direction as x hat, which means that the vector component is in the negative x hat direction. So I have translated the words in this problem to actually get this vector component without ever really doing a dot product. I know that the, the scalar component is negative 10. It tells me that this vector has a length of 10 and it points in the opposite direction as x hat. And I gathered that information by seeing that it, the butterfly flew 10 miles west. Now let's put it together for the um, y hat direction. So vector f, the y hat, like vector component of vector f, they tell me that the butterfly flies 3 miles south. That tells me the length of this component, 3 miles. South is in the opposite direction as y hat. y hat is pointing north, which means that this vector component has a negative sign out front and then the y hat. So the vector component of vector f is pointing south, which is in the negative y hat direction, with a length of 3 miles. So that's my vector component. I, I was able to do that without, getting, without actually doing a dot product. And then the last piece of the puzzle is the z component. It flies 0.25 miles above the plane of the ground. That's also, you could say, it points out of the plane of the ground. So it's coming up out of the plane of the ground. And z hat is coming out of the board, or out of the plane. Uh, so that would be just 0.25 miles z hat. This vector component of the butterfly is in the same direction as z hat. So that why, that's why that vector component is positive.
So now what I need to do is just add these vector components together and I'm done. That's how I get vector f. So vector f is just the sum of its vector components. So 10 miles in the x hat direction plus negative 3 miles in the y hat direction plus 0.25 miles in the z hat direction. And I'm done. I never did any dot products. I never found any angles. But I was able to extract that exact information that I needed about the vector components just from the description of how the butterfly was moving in each of these directions. So this is the alternative way. If this is the information you're given, this is how you would put this vector into component form. Again, I have another example here. So this time, this is a little bit more, little bit more complex, not even. I have the minute hand of a clock. It's moving from the six o'clock position. So it starts down here at six o'clock and it ends up over here at nine o'clock. So that minute hand starts like from the center and the minute hand touches the six and then it keeps on moving and it gets to the nine o'clock position. And so this change in the position of the minute hand is described by vector P. Vector P starts at six and goes to nine. Vector P describes the change in position of this minute hand. And our goal is to put vector P in a component form using these given Cartesian coordinate unit vectors. So again, let's use these steps to figure this out. We are going to describe P in words. And by doing that, that'll help us break down P into its components, into its vector components. I see vector P here, and I see that vector P points up and to the left. And so now when I look at my unit vectors that I've chosen to describe this coordinate system, the dimension of up is described by the, the y hat unit vector. So the y hat unit vector is describing that vertical dimension. And so P has a component in that vertical dimension that points up. P has a ver vector component in the horizontal direction that points to the left, which if I'm looking at my coordinate system, I see that that's opposing it's in the opposite direction as x hat. So the x hat component, the x direction component of vector p points to the left. So keep that in mind. I want to draw these vector components because it's a little bit, it might be even easier to visualize this if I draw them. And it's in two dimensions, so it's easy to do. So this vertical component of vector p is pointing up. And the horizontal component of vector p is pointing to the left. And so when I add these two vector components together, that's how I'm getting vector P. Remember, vector P is the sum of its vector components. So this would be like vector P dot y hat times y hat. That's the vector component of vector P along the y direction. And this one over here is the vector component of P along the x direction. So I can see the vector components. I just need to describe their lengths and their directions and put it into component form. So this vector, let's do the y component first. I have p dot y hat times y hat. That's just how I'm showing you that I'm working on the, the vector component of p in the y direction. I need to describe the length of this vector. Remember that the length of the minute hand was called l. So really vector p has a length of just the letter L. And I see that this vector is pointing up, which is the same direction as the y hat unit vector. And so I'm done. The vector component of P in the y direction has a length of L, and it has the same direction as y hat. That's all the information I needed to construct the vector component of P in the y direction. Now let's do the x direction. Again, I need the length of that vector. I see from this picture here that the length of that vector is the same as the length of the minute hand. So the minute hand started at the center of the clock and moves out to the, the, the nine. That's the length of the minute hand. So this vector component is, again, the length of the minute hand. This time, notice that that vector component is pointing in the opposite direction as x hat, which means that this vector component should have a negative sign. So my x component, direct a vector component is negative L x hat.
It's a, it's a vector that has a length of L and it points opposite to x hat. So now my last step is just to put all of this information together. So vector P is equal to negative L x hat plus L y hat. And we're done. Never had to do a dot product. Never had to find a norm. I just constructed this by visualizing the vector components. And, and sometimes this is the easier way of doing things, especially if you don't know the angles on this. Instead of doing a bunch of trig and figuring out those angles, let me just use the dimensions that I see exactly on this picture to construct these vector components. The last thing I wanted to talk about is what happens when a vector doesn't have a component along a particular direction. And the example we just did, you'll notice that I never even talked about the z direction because vector p was living in the plane of that board. And so it had an x component, it had a y component, but vector p wasn't coming out of the board or going into the board. So it had no component in the z dimension. So that's why it didn't have anything. It had nothing to express there. I just want to talk about this a little bit more. So let's look at this example, vector f. It has a, an x component and it has a y component. It has no z component. We can interpret this um, based on this coordinate system that vector f lives in the plane of this board. It, it points negative 10 in the x direction and it points positive 3 in the y direction. And so vector f lives, is made up out of these two vector components. It's the resultant of those two things. This would be vector f right here. The fact that it has no z component tells me that it's living in the, the xy plane. Another way of thinking about this is that there is no projection of vector f in the z dimension. If you tried to shine a light on vector f and create a shadow in the z dimension, you couldn't do it. There's no projection of f in that z dimension. Another way of thinking about this is it means that vector f must be perpendicular to that z dimension. Remember that the z component is vector f dotted with z hat times z hat. That would be the vector component of f in the z dimension. And if there is nothing, that tells me that the scalar component must be zero. And the only way to get a dot product of zero is when two vectors are perpendicular to each other. So vector f must be perpendicular to vector z. All right, so that's a lot of ways of describing uh, why vector f has no z component. Same thing here. I have another vector down here. This is vector m. And it only has one component. It's telling me that vector m completely lies in the y direction. Vector m points up with a length of 3 in that y direction. So here is vector m. It has no x component. It has no z component. So again, that there's the way that you can think about this is that vector m has no projection in the x direction or in the, y, in the z direction, which means that it is perpendicular to both of those unit vectors, which, which we can see here. If this is the x hat unit vector, you can see that m must be perpendicular to x hat. There is no projection of m in the x hat direction. If you shine the light down on vector m and you tried to get a projection or a shadow to show up along the x direction, nothing would ever show up because there's no part of M that lives in the X direction. So that's a conceptual way of kind of understanding how a vector, how a vector written in component form, how you can extract a lot of information about that vector.